Introducing my new engine. We did a quick little swap. This is actually the engine from La Fea. Right here, what do we have, Isamara? My K series engine. Yeah, we've had this for a little bit without knowing where it was gonna go, but as you guys saw in the last video, she just got a four-door Integra, and that's gonna be the perfect candidate to put this swap in. What do you think? You're gonna make more torque all motor than the B-series would. Oh, heck yeah. And uh, maybe we can do some cool mods this in the future, but let's do a quick rundown and show the people what we got. You've been picking up some lingo over the last couple weeks, so you should be able to describe it. If anything, I'll jump in and let you guys know what we're doing. Okay, let's do this. So we got a K24 engine, mm -hmm. JDM. We yeah. picked it up out of a shop in Orlando called JDM Express. It comes out from a Japan car all the way from over there. Um, I think it's a TSX. Yeah, it is a JDM TSX. Yes, I got that. Here you go. <laughs> we got the transmission um, from Javier from the that racing channel. Mm -hmm. So if you guys know, it's a RSX Type S transmission for front wheel drive. There you go. Yes. He went all wheel drive, so he didn't need this anymore. He ended up doing um, an aftermarket gear set, and actually he's now sequential, so he didn't need this at all. We got a really good deal on that, so that should be a, a really good platform to start off with. Plus also, a lot of you guys suggested to go K. Some of you said K is the way. So here it is. This is the way we're going. Yeah, so K series were like probably the top amount of comments that we got on there uh, for the last video where we introduced her car. A lot of people were also saying B series, a few H series, and a couple J series, which I was actually telling her after we went to FL2K a couple days ago, uh, there were a lot of J series cars, one in particular, an Insight running Nitrous, and I think it was on the 950 class. Mm -hmm. So it'd be cool to build something like that in the future, like as a grudge car or something. But I think that this build is gonna be perfect for her. That being said, since we've had this engine in trance for a little bit, even not knowing what we were gonna do with it, we started accumulating some parts, but let's uh, introduce some of the parts that are actually going onto this engine, because obviously it is a JDM engine. There's a lot of things that you have to change to run it on a USDM car with all the accessories, but um, this is gonna be her first build period, and it's gonna be like my first build with her, showing her all the ins and outs. So this is gonna be more of a learning experience for everyone all together. And um, like, for example, we have a clutch kit that we'll probably put on tonight and we'll do that not only step-by-step step for the channel like we normally do, but step-by-step step with you working on it too. So um, that'll be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and start pulling out some of the boxes. Um, I have them right out here and it's like eight boxes all together. Okay, so out of all these boxes, I think this one actually might not be car parts. It says walmart.com. I think that has something to do with something else we were shopping. We have a bunch of different parts right here. So. Um, as a quick overview, I think we have a mount kit, um, a header, axles, radiator, clutch kit, and a few other parts. Basically, like 80% of the stuff to go K-Series. And this will be not like an aggressive K-Series build in the sense of like race car, but for her, it was important to still be able to have amenities in the car. AC, power steering. Power steering. We have to add speakers for the radio and do other little things like that, but it's gonna be a full street car, registered, insured, nice paint eventually, and like nice interior and all. But um, I'm kind of out of breath because there were a lot of parts. And it's hot. It is hot, it's like 85 degrees out right now. Um, let's go ahead and try, try like getting some of these parts unboxed and lay them all out so you guys can see. These are gonna be like the essential first step items for when you're case swapping your car. And obviously there's gonna be some DIYs and how to's in this whole process. And we'll obviously not only be teaching her, but also be showing you guys along the way. So this is the first one that's important when you case swap in your car. This is a bracket. Remember when we were in the junkyard, I was on a CRV. Um, the K-Series CRVs have this specific post mount that's necessary for when you're swapping cars. I got like 90% done with pulling it, and then one of the bolts were backing up against the frame, so it, it wouldn't let me actually pull it off. So we ended up just buying a brand new one, OEM Honda. This was like 30 bucks on Amazon. I'll try to put the link right here for you guys. Um, literally just a post mount that you guys need just to attach the mount kit that you get, no matter what swap mount kit it is, to the K-Series engine. And that goes in replacement of the OEM one right there. Oh, they got stickers. Yeah, got some stickers on there. It's a keychain Phillips or flathead screwdriver. Interesting. Okay, and online shop. Okay, you want to do Oh, I think 
think this is the uh, fuel rail kit. So this is super simple. I think it comes with a regulator and everything. Yep, it's a fuel regulator right here. We normally run like uh, Weldon, Weldon fuel regulators on our builds, but this one was super cheap and had good reviews. I don't know how it'll perform, but we can definitely give it a try. And it came with a fitting that I really liked when we were looking at the parts that um, allowed you to run the regulator right off of the fuel rail. So this looks pretty cool right there. It came with this pressure gauge, which it looks like it's a decent pressure gauge. It goes zero to 100. Uh, these, I don't know if we can trust them. We're gonna use the Burton Racing one instead. He has a really, really nice high rated uh, fuel regulator gauge. And that can go either on the fuel rail or on the front of the regulator. Um, that'll be really cool to show. And the cool thing about this kit was that it came with preformed lines. We don't have experience with them, but it'll be cool to check that out and um, go from there. We have a swap kit uh, mount-wise that I remember Kaylin gave us a couple of months ago. Um, we're going to use those. They're no-name brand mounts, but we'll see how they work out. And uh, hopefully they do well. OEM RSX radiator that it actually, from my understanding, still goes onto the stock locations. And we're gonna be exploring that once it goes into the chassis, how the fitment works and everything. But this is literally a $60 radiator off of eBay, an OEM replacement. And you can do like the fancy dual pass uh, aluminum radiators. But from what I understand and from what I've been seeing recently, a lot of people just use the stock ones and don't really post about it. And I think it'll work fine. So you can use that. This is what makes or breaks a lot of the different uh, breathability issues that K-Series encounters with like wrong manifolds and whatnot. Uh, so we went on jackspaniaracing.shop and they actually had in stock a really, really cool header. And we've looked at a couple different designs um, and this is what they uh, determined to be their high flow big tube header. And especially on a 2.4 liter engine, uh, it's very important to have a lot of breathability. So we're gonna be doing like a nice big intake on it and a nice big throttle body. This is like a slip design and it also comes with a down piece, like a down pipe. Um, we're gonna have a full exhaust on the car, right? Or did you want open header? I don't remember what you said. I want it loud. Okay, so very loud. we might do this. I don't know, this is probably gonna be too loud if we end up going no exhaust, but it's cool because if we decide to do like a, uh, I don't know, like an engine cutout or something, we can still use something like that. This is the header part itself. Oh my God. They weren't choking when they said big tube. But um, yeah, so here is the literal big tube header. This slips on, I think in this fashion. This piece goes right here. If you want the downpipe, and if not, we can just get a V-band flange and weld it to the rest of the exhaust. But um, this is going to be super loud right off the bat. So shout out to Jack Spania Racing. Uh, we actually talked to him after we placed the order. Uh, we got it all paid up and whatnot. And he reached out and he said, hey, I know you guys have a lot of people who watch the channel because he recognized the name. And he actually offered us a discount code. So if you guys are watching from home and you want to save 10% on these, um, they, they already go for a pretty good rate. But if you want to go on their website, discount code SENDEPAPI, that's all together, no spaces. It'll save you 10% on their website, not only on the header, but everything they have listed site-wide. So that's a pretty cool deal right there. And um, that should make a decent amount of power. Uh, it looks like it's a really long, really nice, thick tube header. So that's pretty cool right there. When we were at Burton Racing Shop a couple weeks ago, we ended up B-Series swapping ZK. You saw the video, obviously. Um, it was an XTD clutch, which is, it's not the cheapest clutch you can get on eBay, but it's like right there. And um, over the last couple of years, they've been getting a little bit better. Uh, this was like 180 bucks. So we ended up buying this and it was just like the budget way to go. It's probably pretty crappy. Like, you know, they're not gonna last good, but it'll definitely get the car running. And she needs to, to learn how to drive daily a stick shift car. I mean, she drove stick shift every so often, which is good, but not every single day. So if we're gonna burn up a clutch, we might as well burn up a crappy clutch and then we'll put something a little stronger. Um, oh, this is actually a really good manufacturer. Do you know where that's from? Made in China. Made in China, there we go. That works out pretty good. Clutch, pressure plate, and flywheel. So this is their lightweight flywheel. It'll work well. 
Let's clean up the area real quick. Let's go ahead and uh, lay out the parts a little nicer. Maybe see so if we can slip that header tube on because it looks really cool. I want to see it mounted. And uh, we'll show you guys a little bit of a cleaner shot of all the parts laid out. As for mounts, these are, if I'm not mistaken, off-brand mounts. Uh, it looks like they were sandblasted to get ready to be coated or painted black, and we just need to make sure that it's nice and clean so when we put it on, it looks good. Then here is what's considered the T-bracket. This attaches to the rear mount, which is this one right here, and that keeps the car from letting the engine go back and forth like that. But um, yeah, so we have mounts, header, clutch kit which we're going to be installing tonight we'll show you guys how to do that with torque spec and all then the radiator is going to get put into the car once the swap is out the original b series and we have the k series insane shaft axles those are the 500 horsepower rated ones and obviously we have a half shaft already to go along with this as you guys know from a couple videos ago we did crash la fea my personal integra and it got disassembled it's at the frame shop right now you guys will see updates of that soon and um, we're getting it fixed, but all the parts for the car are just scattered everywhere. I think tomorrow I'm gonna try to take the day and clean everything up and um, start organizing because we can't just have all these parts going everywhere. Let's go ahead and do what's first. We have to remove the transmission on this side. All right, so we have uh, pretty much all the components that you'll need to install your clutch kit. And um, so you can learn, there's a couple different things when doing it, obviously these bolts are different than what a typical bolt looks like because mm -hmm. you see how there's a lot of extra stars on it? Yeah. So it's 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 got a lot of indents and whatnot. Um, that's what's called a 12 point socket or bolt. So instead of using a traditional six point, uh, which doesn't have as many indentations, that's a 12 point. So you need a 17 millimeter for that. Then the same thing for the pressure plate bolt, you need a 10 millimeter for that. And that's there, so it fits perfectly. Uh, we'll be using a torque wrench uh, on these engines about 90 foot pounds for the flywheel and then you also use some red loctite on the flywheel side of things and for the pressure plate about 20 foot pounds and you use some blue loctite blue is typical remo typically removable easily red you typically need to remove using heat and that's why i use the stronger one on the flywheel because that's prone for vibration and then you just need this so it doesn't back out on the pressure plate side of things all right, so trans is out. You can see this is all nasty. That's an ugly flywheel. Uh, yeah, so this is actually a flex plate uh, from the factory. A flex plate will attach to the torque converter, whereas a flywheel is thicker and it have, has teeth for the starter to hit. So similar, not the same though. Okay, all right, so that's off. That's looking good. Well, that's looking pretty ugly, but so let me just, this seems okay. I don't think it'll have any issues right there. So basically this hangs right here in its place mm -hmm. where the flex plate came off and then you line it up. Can you see the holes? Yeah. You line it up where the holes are mm -hmm. and then you have to tighten it down. So it's with the small ones, right? No, 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 no. That's going with the big ones on this one because okay. the, these are the ones for the flywheels. This Loctite. You open it and then you just twist off the top. They make bigger cans or bigger containers, but we only need a small one. So we are gonna start with just two to get it positioned. And then I'll show you how to tighten it all the way afterwards. So what we do is a little dab of red Loctite. It's kind of hard with the small ones, but a little dab right there. As you can see right there, see how much that is. Put it off to the side, and same with this one. We put it up to its spot, right there, right? Mm -hmm. And you see it's an interference fit. Yeah. Not a very tight one, because this is a cheap flywheel, but it'll do. And we start it by finger right there. And we go to the opposing corner. So you never want to tighten something side to side. And right now we're just gonna snug it up, just so it's close. But you never want to tighten 
side to side right there, you always want to go in crisscross pattern. So it equally applies the force. You just start threading it in there. That's good. Now the next one, you did perfect. You went right in between the next one. Exactly. You're going to get that one right there. I this kind of stuff. So that's really cool. K-Series automatic bolts and the manual bolts. This is an automatic bolt right here, and then this one is a manual bolt. As you can see, the depth is different. So with a flex plate, you need a short bolt. With a flywheel, you need a longer bolt. This is 45 foot-pounds. So that means that it didn't even turn. That means that the, the impact already got it to the 45 foot-pounds. So that's perfect right there. Since this is the first step, we have to do everything in equal crisscross. That was 45, we're gonna go to 60. Here, it's locked right there. To unlock, you twist this left, and you push this up to the number you want. So put it to the 60 line. I'll hold this right here. Pull this, pull this up, so you get leverage. Oops, sorry. You're good. Now push down. It's starting. Okay, push down. It's tight right there. Yeah. Keep on going. You have to push down. It's spinning. Good. You got that one to 60. That's why you need more leverage. So go up more. A little more. I I push down. Perfect. And we'll go to the next one. Same thing. Nice. A couple more. We have to go up to 90 foot pounds now. I'm going to do this one since it's a bit tighter. Let me, Let me get where you are. One, two, three. Oh, see, I just flipped the bolt. That's why I was holding it for you right there. Anything that has friction, be it brake pads, clutch kits, you can't have grease on it. So it has from the factory oil, and you need to wash that off with brake, brake cleaner or alcohol just to take that film off. Mm -hmm. They put the oil there so it doesn't rust, mm -hmm. but it needs to be taken off, obviously. So, easy way, a little bit of brake cleaner, go like that, and it can drip off, or you just hit it with a rag afterwards. This right here has, this is called a pilot bearing. Some engines have it, some don't. This basically just needs to be pounded in here. And that's pretty simple. I'm gonna just do that for you real quick. You can use the back of this like 17 millimeter bolt that has this flange right there, just to tap it in straight. And that's gonna be the correct thickness for this alignment tool. And what this alignment tool does, it fits in here and holds whatever you put on, which in this case is the clutch, straight. And it gets a tight fit. So this is the clutch disc itself. Always the part that's super flat mm -hmm. goes against the part that's super flat. This would never be able to sit in okay. here because it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. This always needs to touch the friction material. So easy way to remember, the part that's flat goes to the part that's flat. This right here has splines on it, which fit in here and it moves it. So this is simulating what the transmission is gonna do. Mm -hmm. The shaft that comes out of the transmission in the center goes through the clutch to connect both. So this section is a press fit in here. So this goes on here. Now this gets mated. A little bit of pressure in there. And that is perfectly aligned in the center. That's why you do it. You need to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. Now this part uh, is the pressure plate. When you push the clutch, you're moving what's called a throw out bearing. This pushes down on here and these little legs, these little legs get pushed mm -hmm. inwards. Okay. When these legs get pushed inwards, it allows this to separate from the flywheel. It pulls it out. So by doing that, the engine and the transmission disconnect and that's when you can shift. Right on the rag and just give it a little wipe down. These little studs that come out, you see that? Yeah. It's called a dowel. It gets aligned with the small holes. You okay. can only go one way. There's three different dowels on this particular kit. Some have more, some have less. So you have to play with it a little bit. 
to get it to the right location. Sometimes you get lucky on the first try and you get them all to line up perfectly. Uh, that one you see is off. Mm -hmm. Or like, look, you can see on that side, you see it's close, but it's off. Mm -hmm. Some people will try to drill them out, but that's not how you do it. You just have to turn it until you get it perfect. Right there, it's perfect. So that's good right there. You want to start hitting the other ones? Okay. So look at the fingers right here. These are called the, the diaphragm fingers. When I tighten the pressure plate, look how they move, okay? Look at it. So cool. See how they're going in? Yeah. It goes inwards when it gets tightened. So we're loosening these again because they need to go crisscross, tightening, and to its correct torque spec, but you want to get them snug. So we'll get them like this. You got another one ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Check if it has enough. Yeah, it's fine. These aren't as important because. Uh, there's more bolts around the outside. Well, it's just as important. It's just it's they don't get tightened as, as much. I don't have enough. Did you put too much on the first couple ones? No, I put the same thing on all of them. So the first couple ones had too much. It's okay, I got some off of the floor that had fell. Yeah. Is that the last one? Yeah. Give me. Okay, so we'll snug all these. It still clicks. Okay, so come on this side. Right there, right there, it clicked. You stop right there when it clicks, okay? okay. Now go up to this one right here. So tighten it until you feel the click. Perfect, yeah, you felt the click and you stopped, awesome. So next one would be across, exactly that one down there. Right there, perfect. And the last one right here, number six. Perfect. That's all six. Nice. Congratulations. There we go. That was definitely a tight fit. So this is the inside of the trans, or excuse me, the inside face of it. This being the throw out bearing literally just goes, these little tabs attached to this fork right here. I'm gonna pull it out so you guys can see it. And this has this spring that shouldn't have fell out right there. That goes right there. This little area for the ball goes on this ball right here. And it's a little bit of old grease. And we're gonna re-grease it with some new grease because that slides every single time. Every single time you hit the clutch, that slides in and out. So we have just some like regular multi-purpose automotive grease. We get a little bit like this on our fingers and we put on a couple spots. We're gonna put a little bit right here. This is where the slave cylinder pushes outside. We're gonna put some right here where the ball meets in this spring. Okay. We're gonna put some on the shaft right here because that's gonna go into the pilot bearing. Okay. Into that little thing where the where you have to pull it out exactly. And then a little bit on the splines because that's gonna go through the clutch and it can be a tight fit over this collar, this collar that comes off the trans. That might be a little too much, but it's okay. You can wipe some off. We're gonna grease the ears right here. Because this thing is gonna slide right here. Every time you hit the clutch, this slides in and out. Put a little grease. We wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth for when we do hit the clutch. This is gonna go through this hole. Before I put this to the ball, I'll put this, these ears over right here. And they're gonna get, you see how it's slotted in? Mm -hmm. I'll put it over here. And then this little dimple where the ball is on the inside of the trans is gonna click into place. You heard that click? Yeah. So now the fork is stuck in place. When you hit the clutch, it goes like this. Oh. And remember what I taught you when this pushes, what is it that it pushes against? The teeth. Exactly, the, the teeth on the diaphragm. And when you push into that, it releases the clutch. And what happens to the engine and the trans? They separate and that's when you could shift. Perfect, yeah. 
Look at you. You're over here learning more than most people that work on their cars. So, yeah. So, basically, this is ready, good to go. There's plenty of grease on there for us to be safe. We're literally just going to put this trans back onto the engine. I'm going to manhandle it because it's kind of a pain. And uh, I don't want you to get hurt. So, let me go ahead and just pull this camera off to the side. Let's see how far it is. It was sitting close to it before. wonder how close it is. Oh, I think it's getting in. Oh, right there. Mm -hmm. It literally fell right into place. See, that's because we had it plenty greased and the height of the trans to the engine is the same. Now it just needs to be wiggled on a little bit, but it literally, the splines fell into place on the engine side. That's good. I can put this bolt goes to this spot. That's probably one of the easiest transmissions that we've ever put. This is a single disc clutch for you, Isamara, you already know what the twin disc is because that's what we run on the race car. But being that it's a single disc, it makes it so much easier because you only have to align one disc as it's in the name. So that's really cool, makes it nice and simple. I'll go ahead and put on the rest of these bolts real quick, just the bell housing bolts to secure the trans to the engine and we should be good on the clutch. I'm gonna loosen those bolts that are here to take this ugly shield because essentially this is where the header, the nice one that we got from Jack Spania, is gonna go. Perfect, yeah, let's zap it off. That's off. Keep on zapping it. Until it that might be tight. Get go to the next one. You're not on it right there. You didn't break the bolt. You stripped the head. Well, it was. It was his fault. Whose fault? The bolts. There we go. Got that tight and loosened. Clamp that on. I wonder if this will work. Nope. All right, so those bolts have pretty much caused our defeat for the night. We ended up heating, still not working. We have it soaked with some WD-40 right now. We'll come back tomorrow with the proper sockets. I just have to go buy them. I didn't have any. I have some that are larger. I think I put them here. I put them somewhere around here. Larger, and I have some that are smaller, but nothing for like a 12 mil bolt, unfortunately. So tomorrow we'll get to that. We'll be able to zap them off and put the header on. We'll pick up right where we left off. I know this video is probably kind of long, but we're going to chop it up and see if we can save some time on it and just give you guys the nice little highlights. But um, yeah, let's get back to it tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. Got my little puppy here, Kenobi. What's up, buddy? Um, I was able to take this header shield and my wife, Samara, is behind the, the phone right now. Recording. Hi. So um, we ended up not getting an extractor kit or anything. Literally just cut the bolts off with a grinder. And um, this is the OEM header. So you guys saw how big the big tube is. So this is literally the stock header and the primaries are super small. And um, being that it's such an efficient motor, these things have the ability to flow a lot of air. So they pick up quite a bit of power just by doing simple stuff like intakes and headers. Um, I think I have one on the block as well, or two. So before we put the new one on, I'm going to set this side by side to the new header because it's pretty wild if you ask me. The big difference you guys can probably hear i have the fan on i'm going to turn it off real quick this is on the left the stock header and then on the right is the jack spania long tube big tube header so you can see the difference in the primaries is insane kenobi what do you think it's pretty crazy right i think it's pretty crazy but um yeah so this is my little golden retriever dog we haven't shown him on the channel before have we no no so what's up buddy 
What's up, buddy? Hey. Cute little dog. Hey. Sit, 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 sit. Good boy. Give me your paw. Give me your paw. Good boy. Little five-month-old puppy. Already going to be good little shop dog. So we're going to keep the stock header gasket on there just right now because we want to do an aftermarket header gasket. Um, there's some really nice ones out there that are like copper and they seal really, really good. And we might end up doing one like that. We have one on the turbo engine, the B series behind us, and it works really, really well. But um, for the time being, we're just going to mount this up as it came from Honda. We just have the nice big two header on there. We'll probably get some nice studs too. Um, there's some nice titanium stud kits out there. We'll probably just do something like that, make it cleaner, make it hold up a little better. And she's on. Alright, so we have the engine all pretty much staged up. Uh, we're missing some hardware in the sense of bolts for the brackets because obviously we got this uh, mount kit from Kalen and it was just a second hand. It wasn't something new that we picked up. So we need to pick up some hardware for the missing bolts on there. Header is on there, test fitted. Um, we're looking pretty good on the case swap. What do you think over there? So yeah, that's a good point. Um, this still has all the OEM accessories. Um, obviously, like this is the drive-by wire OEM throttle body. We're gonna get a different throttle body, different intake manifold, and a lot of these hoses actually get deleted. So this one goes to the radiator. We have it over there. And then there are a couple hoses like this one and this one that will still keep for like heat in the car. Yes. So we'll still be using that one. Uh, but the rest of all these like little hoses, air hoses and whatnot, that'll basically get deleted. Um, this will probably just go to the intake and then we'll have only one air hose for the brake booster. But all these little tiny trinkets and whatnot, that all goes away and we'll have it really, really clean. And we'll also be using this uh, fuel rail as well with the regulator. So that'll clean up this section, um, this bronze piece that gets replaced as well. We'll probably keep the stock injectors just because it doesn't need anything until we do some more upgrades, but it should be good for the time being. And let's see, does it have any oil in it? Mm -mm, no. Let me see. It's clean. Oh, it was on the other side that it had a little bit. It has just the dot of it. So there's a little bit of oil in it, but it definitely needs to be filled up, drained and filled up uh, before it goes into the car. But um, we should be good on that end. All right, guys, so that does pretty much sum up the video for today. Obviously, you saw that we got a lot of the K stuff uh, wrapped up in the sense of the clutch. We got the header on. Some of the accessories are on the way, and we still have to order a few of them. But um, all in all, what do you think about your little build coming along so far? I'm excited. I'm very excited, and I like it a lot. Hey, so she's pretty excited, I guess. Um, like you guys already know, we do have stickers on the website. We actually just came out with a couple new ones. Uh, the Sende Papi, uh, classic SP tuning, one of La Fea right there, and another SP tuning one. Mm -hmm. I don't those know if you want to show them. So those are pretty cool. If you guys want to support the Slap channel, sticker. we'll probably be doing some slap stickers for her car as well. But um, some cool little designs. We actually have the Sende Papi on the new scooter we got, which is this right here. And you can see it's half camo and then half red, just like the car. And we have this on both sides. So that's pretty cool. Um, fun story about this. We actually just got this electric scooter for the track a couple days ago. And my gracious wife decided to fall off of it on the first day. But her knees are looking pretty good. They got scraped up, but uh, she's healing and whatnot. So we're, we're pretty good on that avenue. Don't forget to break. Yeah, yeah, she she kind of forgot to hit the brakes and ended up uh, kind of just rolling it. But uh, there definitely will be brakes on this car with this engine swap, so we won't have to worry about that. And um, yeah, that does pretty much sum up the video for today, guys. I hope it enjoyed, or hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. We'll be doing a full build series on this, a whole how-to and DIY on how to case swap your Integra, Civic, EG, EK, anything from the 92 to 2000 range roughly. And it'll be a nice step-by-step -step process and you guys will see everything for her car moving forward. Uh, but thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next video and see ya.